Good morning, I'm Alan, and today is our Sunday morning Bible study taken from the book of Genesis, and it is about Joseph, after being sold into slavery, rises to the second highest position in the land of Egypt. And today we're going to look at his brothers coming back and Joseph finally revealing himself to his brothers, telling them who he is. And up until this time, they had thought that he was dead. So if you have your Bibles, get your Bibles out, or your digital Bibles, or your Kindle Bibles, and, and follow along. We're going to be looking in, chap in Genesis chapter 45. But... I'm going to go back through the introduction because there's a lot of material between last week and this week that is not covered in the lesson. And if you don't know it, it kind of gets confusing or it doesn't make the story flow as smoothly as it should if you don't remember the story or don't recall all the details. Now, Joseph was the favored brother, and maybe he was even spoiled a little bit. You know, he was given a coat of many colors that set him apart, and he made sure that his brothers knew that he was considered special. He also had a dream that his brothers and his father would bow down to him. And after a while, the brothers had had enough of this, so they decided to do something about it. And, and they were mad enough and bad enough that they wanted to kill him. And one of the brothers, Reuben, talked him out of it and said, just throw him into the pit. So they threw him in the pit while he's in the pit and they're eating lunch, some travelers came by going to Egypt. They pulled Joseph up out of the pit, sold him, and he was sold as a slave into the land of Egypt. Well, he had some rough times in Egypt, but every time he was given the opportunity what he was put in charge of did well, and Joseph did well with God's guidance. And But he gets into these rough situations. So he's in prison. The Pharaoh has a dream. The Pharaoh finds out that Joseph has the gift of the interpretation of dreams. So... He gets him out of prison, tells him the dream. Joseph correctly interprets the dream, and the Pharaoh places him second in command of the whole country. And the problem that Joseph solved for Pharaoh in Egypt was surviving the common famine. But over in Israel, they didn't know any of this, and the famine also affected them, it was at least a regional, probably a worldwide famine. And so Jacob sends his sons to Egypt to buy grain because Egypt is the only place that was prepared for the famine because of God interpreting the dream correctly through Joseph. And so Jacob sends all of his sons to buy grain except for Benjamin, because now Benjamin is the favored son. Remember, Joseph and Benjamin were born of Jacob's favorite wife, Rachel. And Rachel had died in childbirth, giving birth to Benjamin. So now he was the favored son because they thought Joseph was dead. And all of that's in, in last week's video, so you may want to go back and, and watch that lesson. 
Now, in Genesis chapter 42, some of our information, verses 25 through 28, it says, Joseph gave orders, gave orders to fill all the bags with grain and to put their silver, their money, back in the bag. So they didn't even have to pay for the grain. Of course, this is going to cause problems later on, and it's going to make the brothers suspicious. And so this was done for them. They loaded the grain on the donkeys and they left. Well, at the place where they stopped for the rest for, for that night, you know, the sleeping place, they opened the sack to get feed for the donkey and they discovered the silver in the sack. And they thought, oh, this, this must be a mistake. And he says, my silver's been returned. Here it is in my sack. And they started to get scared and they talked to each other and they said, what is this that God has done for us? Because now they think, uh-oh, we're, we're in trouble. Something strange is going on here. And then in verses 34 through 38 of the same chapter 42, they're returned back to standing in front of Joseph. And he says, bring your, bro your youngest brother to me so I will know that you're not spies but honest men, that I will give your brother back to you and you can trade in the land. Sounds like a simple deal. Bring, bring the younger brother. They get Simeon out of jail who's been in jail. And they can go back and forth and trade in the land. Sounds like a good deal. But as they were empty in their sacks, they, there in each man's sack was a pouch of silver. So they get home and they realize all the brothers have gotten their silver back. And so Jacob's there with them they became scared because this is quite unusual. And then in verse 36, it says, Then their father Jacob said to them, You've deprived me of my children. Joseph is no more, and Simeon is no more, and now you want to take Benjamin. Everything is against me. Then Reuben said to his father, you may put both my sons to death if I do not bring him back to you and trust him to my care and I will bring him back. But Jacob said, my son will not go down there with you. His brother is dead and he is the only one left. If harm comes to him on the journey you are taking, you will bring my gray head down to the grave in sorrow. So here they are, they're at the point, the grain that they had purchased and gotten leaving Simeon in jail, had run out, so they need more. And so they're trying to make plans to go back and convince Jacob to allow Benjamin to go with them. And he's saying, no way. Simeon's gone, Joseph's gone, and now you want to take Benjamin? I'm not taking that chance. And he says, Jacob says, well, just go back anyways. And Judah says, we can't. Because the ruler said, don't come back unless you bring the youngest brother, Benjamin. And then Jacob blames them for saying that they had a younger brother. Basically, he says, if you hadn't said anything, he wouldn't have known that you had a younger brother. Unfortunately, well, we know different. We know that Joseph would have known there was a younger brother. So if they tried lying or not saying anything, you know, he would have caught them in that lie. And so Judah says, send him with me and I will personally guarantee his safety. Jacob says, well, okay. I mean, at this point, they're out of food. They're starving or close to it. And he says, put a double amount of silver 
in case when you get there, you know, you receiving the silver back was a mistake. So you can you can pay for the for the grain that you previously received, and you can pay for the new grain. And bring along some of the, the products that we have here as a gift for this ruler. So they go, Jacob asked them about their father, his father. He gives them a banquet and he seats them in order from the oldest to the youngest. You know, something should have went off in their head. Hey, this is this is different. This for some reason, this guy knows who the oldest is and knows who the youngest is. And so he sits them in the banquet in the, in the order of their ages. And the brothers didn't really pick up on that. And so they have the banquet, they get the grain, they're sent on their way, except Joseph puts his silver drinking cup along with silver along with more silver in Benjamin's bag then he sends out his servants probably some soldiers too and stops the brothers and confronts them and he says hey what what's this you've stolen from me you know after everything I've done for you after I treated you so well and the brothers go back well they're innocent as far as they know, they haven't done anything. They, they, there shouldn't be any reason for them. So they said, go ahead and look at our bags, see what happens. And Joseph looks in each bag, and of course, Benjamin has the cup, the extra silver. So he puts Benjamin in jail and releases the rest of them. But they say, look, we can't go back to our father unless we have Benjamin with us or else our father will die. So Joseph's playing kind of a, a cat and mouse game with them a little bit. But they don't know it. But he's also wanted to see how they react how they support Benjamin how they support the other brothers will they will they stick up for him or will they sell him down the river like they did to him so many years before and of course we know they said look we're not going back without Benjamin we can't go back without Benjamin which brings us to today's lesson in Genesis chapter 45 and Joseph makes himself known to his brothers. In verse 1, Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all his attendants, and he cried out, Have everyone leave my presence. So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. And Joseph knows that they have changed from the days previous when they sold him into slavery. And he cries and he sends out the attendants so he can have a private time with his brothers and reveal himself. He sends away the interpreter because the interpreter would know Hebrew and know everything that the brothers were talking about. And then in verse 2, And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him and Pharaoh's household heard about it. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified in his presence. And so here's this loud crying, revealing who he is, and his brothers are now terrified because they know who he is. And they're like, uh-oh, what's this mean? Are we really in trouble? Are we going to get our punishment now? But that's not the purpose Joseph is doing this. He's been playing tricks with them a little bit, and he sees how they've changed and how they act. And, but they're still afraid because they see that Joseph has absolute power, so much power over them now. 
And in verse 4, Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come close to me. And when they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. So he reminds them, not as a, as a means of punishment, but as a means to reassure them, yeah, it's, it's really me. I'm not dead. You sold me into slavery. This is where I ended up. And there's a reason for it. And because they're scared and speechless, Joseph tells them again who he is and how he got to where he is today. And then he says in verse 5, And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. He, he consoles them. He reassures them. He says, don't worry. This was part of God's plan. Joseph knows that he's accepted it. Now he's trying to get his brothers to accept it. And he gives some more background in verses 6 and 7. For two years there, is, there has been famine in the land, and for the next five years there will be no plowing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So he tells them more of what's going on. He says, look, this is God's plan. He wants a remnant of us, the Israelite people, to remain. And he has a great deliverance planned. And then in verse 8, so then it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me father to Pharaoh, lord of his entire household and ruler of Egypt. He doesn't blame them. He says, look, it was God that sent me here. And so plans were made for the family to move here to live near Joseph and remain under his protection and to make sure that they had enough food to eat. And we see that in verse 10 and verse 11. He says, you shall live in the region of Goshen and be near me, you, your children and grandchildren, your flocks and herds and all that you have. I will provide for you there because five years of famine are still to come. Otherwise, you and your household and all who belong to you will become destitute. He says, look. There's five more years of famine coming. You've already run out of food several times unless you come here you're basically probably not going to survive. And then verse 12, you can see for yourselves, and so can my brother ben Benjamin, that it is really I who am speaking to you. Tell my father all about the honor accorded me in Egypt and everything you have seen, and bring my father down here quickly. So this, this goes back to the original dream. You know, of Joseph being a ruler and the brothers bowing down and the father bowing down. Now, this is where he's at. And the dream has come true. And he tells them, believe it. Look, even Benjamin, you know, my brother who was closest to me, believes it is me. And tell my father my position and everything you've seen here and bring my father here quickly, because he hasn't seen him in so many years, and he would like to see his father. And then verse 14, Then he threw his arms around his brother Benjamin and wept, and Benjamin embraced him, weeping. And he kissed all his brothers and wept over them. Afterward, his brothers talked with him. So they had this, this family reunion, this, this time of praise and, and catching up and you know, forgiveness. It was probably a pretty great family reunion, and it would be even better once his father gets there. So we have this final gathering. We have this forgiveness. We have reassurance that everything is okay between Joseph and them. And he says, look, you don't have to worry. Everything's all right now, and all you have to do is move to Egypt to be close to me, and things will be even better in the middle of this famine. I'll take care of you. You'll be protected. 
And best of all, we'll all be back together again. You know, and that's the promise that Jesus gives us with the promise of the resurrection and the promise of heaven, that one day all of us will be resurrected, will be reunited, and will be together. And Joseph and his family shows us the power of God and shows us the things that God has planned and the things that God will make happen. So let us pray. Father, we thank you for re revealing your loving forgiveness through Jesus. And we thank you for this story that shows us long ago that you made plans for Joseph and his family and that you have also made plans for each one of us. Help us to forgive others as we have been forgiven. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Invite a friend to watch with you later on or share this with somebody. Don't forget we have live worship at 1010 a.m. on Facebook and YouTube. Also, we have worship here in person, so you're welcome to join us. Hope to see you later. Have a great Sunday.